സ്വിച്ച് ഓഫ് യുവർ മൊബൈൽ ഫോൺ ആൻഡ് ക്യാമറ നിങ്ങളുടെ മൊബൈൽ ഫോൺ ക്യാമറ തുടങ്ങിയവ ഓഫ് ചെയ്യുക പ്രദർശന സമയത്ത് യാതൊരു വിധത്തിലുള്ള ലൈറ്റുകളും പ്രകാശിപ്പിക്കുവാൻ പാടുള്ളതല്ല July 2010 At Mars Curiosity Twitter account of New Mars Science Laboratory mission reads Very busy in the clean room as I get ready to roll for the first time in about 15 minutes Just observe how the use of first person makes it seem as though the robot is speaking directly to its friends in cyberspace despite being an inanimate object that could be on a planet Mars millions of kilometers away further just observe there the other JPL spacecraft at Mars rovers retweeted at Mars curiosity's call oh they grew up too fast such comments establish relationship between two robots this relationship is visible to thousands of followers who feel that they are privy to this intimate relationship between their robotic friends well what we showed you all just now is the scenario of modern 21st century information societies mode of understanding and communicating science now let us hear a translated part of the sanskrit text from aidareya brahmana he the sun never sets nor rises when men think that he's setting he's only turning around after reaching the end of the day and makes night here and day below then when men think he's rising in the morning he's only turning around after reaching the end of the night and makes day here and night below thus he the sun never sets at all so clearly the author of the text tries to convey the course of day and night further please don't miss the style of description isn't it matching with what modern society do as tweeting india a country of rich wisdom and cultural heritage has great contributions in modern sciences Modern astronomy as practiced in India is on par with what is practiced globally but did our ancestors in ancient India endeavor in astronomy was ancient indian civilization having any credentials and achievements on scientific and astronomical knowledge of which we can be proud of In Chandogya Upanishad 
which is one of the most ancient Indian literature. We find sage Narada being asked by sage Sanat Kumara as to which are the sciences that he has studied already. Narada enumerates the sciences he has studied among which he gives the science Nakshatra Vidya which in other words mean astronomy. This story gives us some insight into the realms of ancient Indian astronomy. Though the term Indian astronomy in modern world makes no sense. Vyasa is considered to be one of the most influential ancient Indian Vedic astronomers. Let's hear a sloka or a poetic verse written by him nearly five millenniums before. Rajishnuna vimanena kamagena mahiyasa vaimanika natyaseta charan logan yathanila pretsha yitwa bhuvogolam patneya van susamstaya atyascharyam Mahayogi Swasramaya Nyavartata He says that Sage Kardama and his wife Devahuti were conducting the space travel. The space vehicle was shining, big, capable of being driven as desired. It is stated that it travelled to spaces where aeroplane could not go and that they went up to other worlds without restrictions. At a time while the vehicle was in space, Kardama showed to his wife the earth sphere, which she was wonderstruck to see. Thereafter, they returned to Ashrama. Though many would discard this account, the very idea of a space travel and that of witnessing directly the spherical shape of the earth still stands untarnished. Next, our modern science found that the center of the inner core that is at a depth of 6370 kilometers, the temperature goes up to 4000 degrees centigrade and pressure reaches to nearly 4 million atmospheres. Thousands of years back, Vedic sage Taitariya Samhita states which means for adoration by Yetna O fire we place you at the focal center of the earth again one more shloka in Rigveda Samhita states that which means that the center of earth is filled with fire. Leaving aside the stories, let's hear the evolution of astronomy in ancient India. Now, let's go back in time, roughly around 1000 BC. During 16th century BC, there was a community calling themselves as Aryans. They composed the earliest literary compositions called Vedas. The general Indian ethos was one of an integrated man-spirit cosmos view. It was a wide and comprehensive view of nature in which the homo sapiens, the thinker, occupied a distinct place. The cosmic man or Purusha the cosmic light or Vishwajyoti and the cosmic law or Rita were perceived by the Vedic seers or Rishis as some sort of cosmic energy source of which the celestial luminaries, the sun, the moon, the planets and the stars were the manifestations. This Vedic perspective has two notable facets the universal harmony and the cyclic concept. The second concept is of far more significance which depicts the cyclical happenings in the celestial sphere. 
the concept of celestial sphere is central to all astronomical knowledge. It's actually a sphere with Earth perceived to be at the center and having a very very large radius. The use of such a concept is to position celestial events with respect to certain reference circle and points. We will know more about it later. The cyclical event in the celestial sphere includes recurring changes in the position of the sun during day, the periodic waxing and waning of moon, the regular appearances and disappearance of planets, day and night as well as seasons. The principal astronomical endeavors in India were the time reckoning and calendar related computations in terms of the motions of the sun, the moon and the planets along the zodiacal path with which were also associated 27 or 28 asterisms. This uncertainty in asterisms arises due to the various conventions followed among Indian astronomers. It is for this reason, perhaps, that one does not notice in Indian astronomy any special inclination to reflect upon the origin, nature and structure of the celestial bodies, nor any effort in mapping of stars outside zodiacal path. Thus, astronomy in India had a rather limited objective. Yet, within this framework, it began to take certain strides of considerable magnitude. In Vedic literature, Jyotisha, which connotes astronomy and which later began to encompass astrology, was one of the important subjects of study. The earliest Vedic astronomical text has the title Vedanga Jyotisha. It was believed that one learned in the Vedas who has also learned the lore of the movement of the moon, the sun and the stars will enjoy eternal bliss. Returning to celestial sphere, if we extend the horizon at any location on the earth, it cuts the imaginary sphere in a great circle called the horizon. Again, all the days we see that the sun rises in the east, moves a path in the sky and sets in the west. This event is cyclic. Our ancient observers have traced the path of sun in the celestial sphere. They called it the Ravi Mark or Surya Path. Modern astronomers call it ecliptic. Also, if we extend the plane of Earth's equator, it intersects the celestial sphere in a circle called celestial equator. The equator and the ecliptic intersect at two points in the celestial sphere. Further, they are inclined with respect to each other. This measure of inclination is called obliquity. A precise knowledge of the movements of the heavenly bodies, especially of the sun and the moon, of the eclipses and the solstices, was essential for the socio-religious life of the people. Solstices are the points on the ecliptic where the sun is separated maximum from the celestial equator. There is enough evidence in the Vedic literature to confirm that the Vedic Indian possessed the knowledge of both the winter and summer solstices. The year was divided into two halves of six months each, marked by summer and winter solstices. A month was divided into two parts, the bright and the dark half of one lunation, each halves consisting of 15 units called tithis. A day was regarded as consisting of 30 time units called 
Mohurtas. The largest day at summer solstice consisted of 18 Mohurtas and the shortest at winter solstice consists of 12 Mohurtas. The period between the time of the Vedanga Jyotisha and the 5th century AD when the first mathematics based astronomical text the Aribhatya appeared was the one which admittedly received certain external influences especially from the Greek and the Greco-Roman region. Alexander the Great is known to all of us. After the invasion of Alexander, the subservient rule that followed resulted in a certain flow of astronomical knowledge. During this period, Hellenistic astronomy was assimilated into Indian astronomy. It was during this period that new astronomical parameters, especially of the planets, were being determined and a system of coordinates adopted. The Nakshatra system was being replaced by the 12 signs of the zodiac. The length of year was determined as accurately as possible. The planetary motions with geometrical models of eccentric circles and epicycles were studied in detail. The occurrences of solar and lunar eclipses were calculated. All these provided a basis of a new class of Indian astronomical works called the Siddhantas. The five important Siddhantas summarized by one of the great ancient Indian astronomer Varaha Meera were the Surya, the Pitamaha, the Vashishta, the Paulisa and the Romaka. The Surya Siddhanta deals with the mean motions of the planets, their true positions, lunar and solar eclipses, planetary conjunctions, junction stars, helical rising and setting of the planets, etc. Let's hear a shloka from Surya Siddhanta dealing with the duration of a day at the poles. Masair Vadasabhiram Varisham Divyam Tadaha Uchyade Sura Surana Manyunyam Ahoratram Vipariyayat Tat Shasti Shagunam Divyam Varisham Asurame Vacha It states that one ordinary year is one full day for the Devas who are supposed to live near North Pole. Also, one full day of the Asuras who are supposed to live at the South Pole is equal to one ordinary year. For Devas and Asuras, their year is equal to 360 times their day. Their nights and days are six months duration and when it is day for Devas, it will be night for Asuras and vice versa. An important aspect of this text is the conception of a huge cycle of 4,320,000 years called as a Maha Yuga. The beginning and the end of this period, the planetary bodies were supposed to be in conjunction having undergone an integral number of revolutions in between. Conjunction refers to the planetary alignment when Sun, Earth and other planets are collinear. There was even a period thousand times longer than Mahayuga called a Kalpa. A notable aspect of the general Indian thinking in respect of what may be called the eternity of time was that even the conceivable minutest interval of time like the one taken for winking the eyelids 